as my topic, I have already mentioned and uh, already possibly it's already uh, announced that uh, I'll be talking on this intellectual property, especially in the copyright. And the uh, special focus will be how copyright uh, is important and uh, significant in our innovations, scientific innovations, or accessing to knowledge and how this accessing to knowledge plays a very important and a very pivotal role. And you can say our innovation, whatever innovations you are going to carry out in your days to come or years to come, uh, it could be a scientific, uh, biological, technological, mechanical, or anything. Here, copyright, how copyright plays an important role in addition to the access to knowledge. Okay, so let, let us discuss all about this. Uh, uh, this is the first disclaimer because you know this idea is a very technologically uh, and uh, legally it's a very infested area. So this is my disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot give you any legal advice if any question arises during my lecture. Uh, so this is a very interesting. Uh, it's an American literary, very famous Tony Morrison once said from her own point of view, access to knowledge is a super. The supreme act of truly great civilizations of all the institutions that's purport to do this and free library stand virtually alone in accomplishments. Because we the librarians, we can transform this world by facilitating the access to the knowledge. It only not only to prepare a society to face the uh, challenges and the difficulties of the 21st centuries and the future, but also it can uh, it can incorporate and instill the idea how to face and how to innovate. So this is uh, what she has said. Is that what actually said? Access to the knowledge really transforms this world. Not only the readers only. So this picture is a very important. What uh, government of India has thought about? It. Government of India has thought about it uh, in the say for almost two thousand eight to two thousand twelve. There was a uh, 2005, in fact, it was started. Uh, however, the uh, National Mission of the Libraries that still continuing with its different manifestative formats, manifestative uh, projects. What they had thought, and it was the it, it was the beginning. Sam Peter, the uh, who is popularly called the father of our Indian uh, guru for the ICT development in India so far. He thought about not only the technology, he gave the importance, importance of network, network, not the computer network. He talked about this library networking by which we can connect. Library is the ancient organizations by which we could have communicated, but unfortunately it has been ignored over the years. So what he thought, it's a quite innovative. He thought about access to the knowledge is the primary. So first of this hexagonal structure starts with this first step is the access. If I give you, say for an example, pick up the practical example, I always love to identify and relate any concept with a practical example so that we can relate ourselves. How can we progress? How can we step in? So access is important. So if I give you access some knowledge, say for a, a knowledge for this, say for our latest visual world, this uh, artificial intelligence or a machine learning or a deep learning. If I give access to the very good and good quality literature regarding this artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning and the related tools and the technology, certainly a concept will be developed in the participants who are getting this uh, knowledge. And then he will try to, if he's uh, creative enough, he will try to think about some, to do something positive or to create something where he or she will be able to use that concepts. Concept, you know, idea is not a protectable. Idea, yes, can we touch our dream? Can we touch our idea? No, nobody can. Because there could be a lots of ideas, but idea can only help to the society, only it becomes a manifestative format when it renders to the tangible format so that we can see it through our eyes, through our naked eyes. So we believe in that action. So application is the next most, and you know, these are most inevitable step after these creations. So if you want to create something, start with these applications. And then whatever the applications you are developing, you are developing for providing some services to the society. 
So any technical problem can only be solved by a technical solution. This is the primary thing of intellectual property rights. Because patent is given only because of these things. When you provide a technical solution to a technical problem, so services will be carried out, services will be rendered, including our library, including our information services. We must think very creatively. And when these services will carry on, we will face some difficulties. We will face some difficulties, and that difficulties can only be met with a new knowledge, new tools and techniques, access to the tools and techniques. Once again, this access, access to new knowledge. So this way, this circle goes on. So very interesting. Uh, and in this whole step one, step two, then step four, five, everywhere, you know, the role of a copyright is undeniable and inescapable. So let us discuss what is the difference between inventions and innovations. Inventions we understand when it is a replicable because, you know, the lightning in the sky, we cannot uh, say that it will continue as per my will. It's not re replicable. It is not reproducible. But inventions, say for your matchbox, whenever you want, whoever wishes, you can go and you can make a fire out of the matchbox. So that's an invention, inventions of the matchbox. And you see, you understand these uh, inventions of this umbrella plays a very important role to protect our head from sunlight and the brains. It's a quite interesting inventions. But unfortunately, in our society, there is a myth invention. When we think about, when we talk about inventions, we always talk about, you know, kind of, it's a big machines, big apparatus, big devices, not it. I told you, it's a technical solution to a technical problem, no matter how little it is. So, you see, the next person is collecting the ring. Okay. The uh, toppled, toppled umbrella is, in addition to the protection he said, it is also helping him, that person in the picture is also helping him to collect this water. And then, you see, the value addition, when invention is added with the value, some value, it becomes a innovations. So these are the few examples that the way we have changed our uh, uh, preservations, preservation uh, of our food, not only the preservations and also how food is manufactured and distributed. It's not only distribution within a city, within a, a few miles. Sometimes when the food processed, Process food transfers or travels miles after miles, 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers. So the distribution is very much important. If there was no refrigeration system or HVAC systems, it was not possible. And this get persons were responsible for that. Secret inventions. Why am I telling you? Because you know, once again, you know, this is a modern smart fridge. Uh, we were all about aware about this uh, freeze, but everyone understood the freeze. But what is a smart fridge? When you are coming from your uh, office, what is available in the fridge you do not know and uh, you need to purchase something. Then how to how to solve these issues? So tools are You have a mobile with you, you have a SIM with you, and you have a camera. Everything is out there. But what was important is a creative applications. So our page box, as our non page box, can be fitted with a camera and that there is a SIM. So same thing hasn't happened with this smart mobile. Before returning your home, you just call your fridge instead of the persons. My, in most of the cases, uh, our uh, uh, home is double income groups. So no one is home. Most of the cases, we are nuclear family. So in that case, no one is home who can tell you what is available in the fridge. That's a day-to-day -day practical issue. So, you know, immediately you call it and then come to know what is available and uh, go for marketing for them. So that is uh, uh, what I was telling you, that it, it was a problem, it's a practical problem. Tools were there, what was important, how to solve it. So it's a value update, whatever the uh, tools and techniques you are using, but uh, developing from the uh, laboratory, it cannot see the daylight until, until it passed through a value update. Value update is nothing, it's basically uh, cost, effective or customer's preference and many parameters are in Whatever innovations in Canada, it are technical, mechanical, biological, it has to pass through this if you want to reach the customers. Because 
same kind of uh, uh, TVs are available with the same functionalities or the same feature available. Why some companies uh, are really the market leader? So there are some important aspects are also there just because they have passed through very effectively this value. So this is the creative climate of innovations. If you are to develop a create a climate of innovation, the role of copyright starts with this. Because, you know, any government in a nation, thereafter I will mention our state, and the state is not our uh, domestic state, it's a state in our nations, India. So, but we have developed scientific and technological infrastructures, and everything starts with the human resource, research and development. After the research and development, why are we carrying a different kind of research and development? There are two routes. One is that you can go for a patent fee or a trade secret or forget about it because for the for a time right? And another one is a publication. Publication means you are trying to disseminate the knowledge to others. Obviously, patent is another most important aspect of that. So what we require, we need to infuse this technology or the technological knowledge to the society because we want to progress, we want to progress our society, technologically, scientifically, and obviously economic. So scientific development needs to be, scientific innovation needs to be diffused to the society. Unless and until it is diffused to the society properly, no inventions is useful for the society. So uh, this is the basic steps, creations of new idea. First, you create a new idea. As I told you, idea is good. Idea is the key. That is the starting point. With the conceptualizations of the new idea. Decision to innovate. Now we have to take a decision. Because if you uh, want to prepare a biryani, you need to some good quality rice, good quality, different spices, and the different other things. So that means you need to collect the ingredients to innovate. You have a good idea. Now you have to prepare it. A biryani, that means a good quality of cook, Good quality of ingredients you require to innovate. So conceptualizations of this new idea. And there's commercializations of the new idea. That means in this stage, you require this one. You require this uh, valley of death. You have to pass through. And passing through the valley of death, a uh, very important role plays, a very sophisticated role plays by copyrighted content. And then finally, it goes to the society. So what is our position in the Global Innovations Index, World Intellectual Property Organizations, along with this uh, Cornell University in the United States, every year it publishes, it publishes World Innovations Index. How innovative we are. This is a very interesting indication for our India. We are really proud of our country's progress because in the, out of 130 countries every year, we go for its uh, indexing. India has, in the last, five and seven years, it has escalated its position from 85 to current uh, 40. 2022, there was a position 40, right now still it's a 40. So we have already reached within the 50 most innovative countries in the world. And hope in the coming few years, we will reach at least in a 2025 era. So more we innovative, more we'll escalate our positions in this indexing. So let us think about this. coming to this. Copyright, uh, you know, there are different philosophies. We will be discussing. We will have a very brief tour on that. Uh, copyright has a three philosophies. First one is uh, first one, your a free rights are reserved. When few rights are reserved for you and few rights you have shared with the society, that we call that we call creative commons. When we shared all my rights, all my legal rights to the society, it's a little bit philanthropic approach, what we call it's a public domain approach. So there are three philosophies. But we are talking about this copyright issues, the copyright uh, where all rights are reserved. So limited accessibility, especially for the developing countries like India. Most of our university research and development centers and uh, all the academic centers, you know, we have a very limited accessibility to the quality research material. And uh, if you cannot access to the research material, if you cannot have the access to the basic ingredients to prepare this biryani, so certainly you will not be able 
even after even if you are a very good cook very good chef the still you will not be able to prepare a good biryani just because that you didn't have the good quality ingredients very similarly you will not be able to prepare a good quality research paper or a technical solution to a technical problem just because of this you are lacking knowledge lacking knowledge means we are lacking access to the knowledge you cannot have knowledge without accessing something which is really worth sharing or worth accessing okay everywhere there are very contradictory very contradictory i have uh, published many things even in the world trade organizations and the white uh, i have published in that part too because you know the especially i wrote about this public health uh, a neglected tropical disease say for a kalaja and then trypanosoma evansi and then sara disease leprosy tuberculosis the all of the silent killers silent killers who never share hardly we are interested because multinational companies they are not interested to invest money for its uh research and development to develop some molecules or because most of the drugs they have become very resistant to our body it's a it's a nature it's a common nature of the parasites and is a evolution of the parasites so what happens in one site in one strand we are talking about the open access open source open innovations open source innovations i know so open source innovations and open innovations are two different things anyway we are every time we are thinking about this open knowledge in another strand in another strand those who are working in the research and development laboratory including our universities different scientific departments they are thinking to apply for the patent apply for the different protections for the ip so don't you think the world is already divided into the two parts especially one part especially the developing nation the leaders in india brazil and south africa leading all of the developing countries these developed countries we are really advocating for open source things but in another strand in another strand the developed nations rich nations european nations north american nations they are vouching for the very very strict protections for the ip and this is why the trade related intellectual property rights have promulgated and they have forced to accept all those terms and conditions which are not favoring our indian philosophy so you can easily understand it's a very contradictory it's a paradoxical absolutely paradoxical we have no answer just i'm uh, sharing all these because we need to brainstorm we need to think so access to knowledge is the most important thing that detrimental us to you know because if you do not get the proper knowledge how can you develop how can you have some uh, creative spark inside right so let us come to another aspects of that development economic development these two great persons karl marx and the joseph smith economic for the any state development they talked about they established the different theories and the different dogmas and obviously they have given different evidences and examples by through their writings that growth is a technological based on technological dynamics yes after second world war growth was based on technological dynamics if you follow our indian uh, five years planning systems you will find that the first if you can recall that first five year plan we try to fit the millions so we first focus on this agriculture but what was the focal point in the second five year plan that started in the 1956 and it was the heavy industry heavy industry because all over the world based on their theories and obviously there was evident evident that a uh, nation were growing progressing based on the uh, technological development technology can help us to progress the state and after that after that in the uh, year around 90s early 90s this to another great persons chris maclabs and robert solly they talked about yes industry industry phase is over there we have developed enough knowledge that can be that can be translated in the economic development so they have talked about this knowledge based industry 
And this is why in the economic point of view, uh, there is a very clear cut indications for a state whether if you want to judge a state is progressing, that means if you want to judge which sector, primary sector, secondary sector, and tertiary sector, which sector is progressing, and tiltations and the inclination the skewedness to, towards what? Primary sector, secondary sector, third year, tertiary sector. Because tertiary sector consists of this knowledge-based universities. If you are fully based on the agricultural, you cannot become this one. You cannot improve your third tertiary sector. It's a university research and development. It's a white collar jobs. And the secondary is a machinery jobs, manufacturing industries. So more we progress, more our tertiary sector will progress and will be number and the expansions will be uh, very high, especially in the tertiary sector. So knowledge-based economic growth started in the beginning of this uh, 90s. Gradually, we experiencing after this 1991, Possibly some of you at least can remember the country, India is experiencing and witnessing a huge economic growth just because of just because of uh, the then very knowledgeable Prime Ministers, Dr. Manmohan Singh, who actually started, who stopped this Inspector Raj and developed this, uh, our new economic policy, NEP, Nativity. So whatever we are enjoying, experiencing, and witnessing as a member of the city generally of India, it is just because of this new policy. And after that, uh, subsequent government, they have also done extremely well, extremely well. So knowledge-based industry, so that knowledge-based industry can progress, knowledge-based industry can flourish. So these are the two great proponents of that. There are three waves of the knowledge society because Sampituta was talking about this uh, different kinds of uh, knowledge information society or knowledge society. But we have to understand from the core of the or the crux of the issue. The crux of the issue, the first wave came in 1970, 1990, second wave, third wave, 2000 onwards. So we are belonging to that. After 2012, another development has come, possibly you are all aware of this development of uh, deep learning based and AI based tools and techniques. Everyone is experiencing that. So that is also, I will be discussing a very little on this artificial intelligence issues. Reduce access to knowledge. So important knowledge, that knowledge that can transform not only the society, that can transform the fate of a nation that is actually caged somewhere in the form of intellectual property rights. At the same time, we are talking about these open access issues, open source issues. And especially somehow through my experience uh, for the last uh, one and a half decade, I have been experiencing, I have been witnessing these kinds of open source movement. I have also the signatory of the Bovai possibility. All know about this. Budapest Open Access Initiatives, by the way. I'm forgetting his name. It's a great person. So uh, I signed over there. Even the daily declaration, I signed over there. But unfortunately, this open source movement, open access movement, open knowledge things, somehow I might be wrong that uh, somehow this movement has reduced, reduced to a library and speed. It's very unfortunate. I have talked to many of my scientist friends and the professors who are doing excellent in their activities in their disciplines, chemistry, physics, biology. I tried to push this open access issue, but they were not interested because two things are disconnected. Because they are telling that they are also correct. If I do publish in your open access journals, there are some slots available in the journals you can publish if you are having funding. And the third most important, if you publish with these open source journals, you will not uh, attract the good kind of funding that he requires for his promotions, career growth, and aspirations. Many things are contradictory. So uh, whenever we are talking about this open access issue, I'll focus on this, especially on this, uh, uh, how copyright is influencing innovations and then uh, accessing to knowledge. So whenever we apply for a patent, you know, patent is a kind of uh, social contract. You have invented something which is useful. What you think is useful for the society. There are a few criteria that they are, say, for a novel inventive states and industrial applications. You think it's useful for the society, you apply to the patent. 
But in exchange of government will give you, state will give you 20 years protections. But in exchange of that, what do you need to do? You need to disclose that information. Disclose your invention to the society so that any person, because you know knowledge development is a kind of drill Whatever you have developed, every one of us, we are coming with some expiry date. Okay. So after that, new generations will come and they will work on my work and they will go. So this way really this goes. So you have to disclose information so that any person sitting in any corner of the world, they can uh, innovate and they can work on your uh, knowledge that you have shared, disclosed, and they can also produce commercially your innovations. So that's a, a disclosure. When they are disclosing, what you call it a provisional specifications and the complete specification where you need to specify what are the uh, basic ingredients like this video. How did you prepare? How did you invent all these nitty-gritties, all pros and cons? How did you invent that particular machine device and things? You have to tell me, along with the uh, drawings, if it is possible. And uh, if it is a microorganisms related patent, you have to submit this microorganism. So the specifications means are you are disclosing the information. One is a provisional specification when you are submitting with the patent. Complete specifications means when you are submitting a complete specification after finishing your innovations. Okay. So whatever the provisional and complete specification is, it is actually is a kind of copyrighted model that you cannot access. See this, copyright in the patent document, what you have written, not only the specification, another portion is also there, that is a claims. You have invented something, that means you want a protection. Protection means you want, you, you are claiming some. There are two types of claim, dependent and independent claims are there. Claims means you are writing something. These are that, say for a 10 claims are there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight claims. That means you are writing something that are also copyrighted. But, you know, in from our library and information science point of view, patent is a technological information. It's a legal information. It's a scientific information. If you can go through a patent, uh, technological information, you must go to the patent information because it's a first-hand experience. If you want to study the technological trend of a particular technology, you have to study the patent documents. Abstract, discussions, claims, specifications, everything on all are patentable. You cannot access all these questions. So these are the basic patent documents and it is a patent from PCT, Patent Cooperation Treaty is a patent from the World Intellectual Property Organizations. So these are the basic important thing and everything is a copyrighted content. Publication date, first filing date, applicant, inventor, title, drawing, everything is a copyrighted. These are the basic component for almost every country's patent document consists of, including us. First one is the bibliographic information, as I say, text with claims. What are the discussions? The drawings. Now, you see, coming to our, once again, to the knowledge aspects of the patent. Whatever we have disclosed, it is nothing but our manifestations, our embedded knowledge that comes from our person. So, if you go to the patent documents, it is nothing. It is nothing that comes from a human mind or emanating from a human mind or a brain. Or that means, that means uh, it's a somebody's ownership. Idea and expression. There is a very strict dichotomy between these uh, two aspects, two perspectives. As I told you at the beginning of my discussions that uh, idea is not predictable, but the expressions. So. The way you have expressed same idea, same idea can be expressed in the different form and formats and all are patentable, trust me. Laboratory note, sometimes what happens, uh, there is a, even that uh, legal battle even drags to the patentee or the potential patentee or the parties of the different inventors who is actually the legal owner of that uh, patent. So in that case, once again, a copyright comes very handy. What you write, 
what you write in the laboratory notebook. Maybe it in a print format, maybe it in a digital format. I have seen in the different foreign laboratories, it is written in the digital format when you enter to the laboratory, be it a dry lab or a wet lab. Uh, so there are digital laboratories. And what is your contribution to a particular invention is legally, legally certified by that organization, so that's lab and your role uh, ratio pro rata basis that ownership is contributed is divided but sometimes you know human mind is a very complicated sometimes they're not happy with the percentage they're not happy with the ratio they have divided this ownership so many of time uh, this thing goes to the court and in that case laboratory notebook what is expressed over here that's a laboratory notebook or the digital thing where you have written something that is copyrightable content, that plays a very, very important role. You know, right now, uh, as I told you, under the trees, mouse to mouse trap, everything is a patentable. And what is important, when I am hiding some informations from you, that means what happens? There are some person who are having some information and some person who are fully able with the right kind of information that just think about the developed and developing nations. They are publishing in the different useful platform, so-called important platform, even in our field. But uh, to send applications, send article towards them, many a times through my experience I have seen, most of the cases have rejected our applications, our uh, article. Just because of that, we did not have the access to the latest latest development in this particular field. We did not have any access. They did not understand. They have not any understanding that uh, we do not have that kind of access. We have a very limited access to the books, books, chapters, elements. And this is why what happens at the end. There is an information asymmetry. If you want to publish something from, say, sitting in Canada, this is quite easy. But sitting in Kolkata sitting in India is a very, very difficult. Still, if you can publish it, uh, really it's a uh, very good achievement because there is a huge information asymmetry from the copyright point of view because copyrighted content are not accessible. This is a very important, uh, it's a Latin word, ex nihil or nihil feet. Nothing comes from nothing. Sometimes uh, there is a we mistake. We should not call it some mistake. It's a great or a Himalayan blunder. That's a, a suppose I have written one article. Suppose I have written something. We forget to acknowledge somebody because we feel that we have created this knowledge for the first time on earth, but it's not. Nothing comes from nothing. When we sit in a four-story house, we forget that first-story house was built by my father. Without this first story of the building, I would not have seated. I would not have uh, uh, had this three story, another three story without this first story, without my father's contribution. Most often we forget the father's contribution. That means whenever we think, we should think about that so knowledge is a relay race. My, my forefathers, some people, they have developed something. And because of that, I have known something. I have come to know something. And based on that, I have written, I have developed something. So nothing comes from nothing. It is not a current word. It's a, a very old, old chanting kind of things. Ex nihil and nihil fruit. As I told you, generational knowledge is a real race. And see, try to understand the whole creative ecosystem and the role of the copyright in holistically, very holistically. So ontogeny is a, is a biological term. Ontogeny recapitulates biology. Some of you possibly know that uh, two weeks or three weeks fetus of all mammals look alike. We cannot distinguish. And it's a very important chapter in the embryology. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. That tells us that our source is same. Okay. So very similarly, in earlier, in the ancient world, there was a copyright, and there was a very strict copyright. And uh, the right to read a books or any kind of story or any kind of uh, reading material 
was given only to the king only to the king or some preachers or some you know kind of ministerial people no person other than the scripture and we know this liquor systems so this is a book were changed in the second phase of the life in the middle phase copyright came copyright came in the uh, 600 years back and for a particular year so it started with the johans guten bastian kinds of uh, printing books so so there's a middle age copyright came into force the first uh, copyright act was 1709 statute of canning and somebody calls it as 1710 forget about that thing so 1709 that means almost uh, 500 years back or 600 years back so that was copyright that means we have developed some legal tools by which this uh, earlier it was changed right now the right to read up that book was restricted because it's a copyright if you purchase that copyrighted content if you purchase it only then you will be able to. otherwise not and once again in the right now in the digital phase of our life in the human civilization we are moving around okay you see all are saying now we have developed a drm digital rights management the mood point of all discussion is book once again has become changed against this pay one that means we want to access most of us uh, already accessed uh, we have already seen that uh, you are trying to uh, access a very important article or a book chapter on anything that you want to study for your research or for for your say for a generality or casualty is not uh, accessible sorry you cannot access access that means you have to purchase it only then you will be able to see it so that's a deal it's a, a bundle of software and it's a kind of you can call it a copyright once you uh, uh, it's a capsule kind of structure drm is actually giving it's a technological shield over it if you pay it immediately what happen that pay wall will open and you can access so in our developing nation most of us who are connected with this academics we are not in positions our institution most of the cases are not in positions to access all those resources we need that we need so the same thing once again has happened against this paper so we started with the chain then copyright and then drm everything is same mood point and the bottom line is our required documents are still chained earlier it was a physical chain right now it's a digital chain when you are using some copyrighted content there are some uncertainty comes to your mind that's all is the work what uh, the kind of uh, work i'm using is the work protected by copyright is there a specific exceptions in copyright law that covers my use is there a license that covers my use is my use covered by fair use do i need permissions from the copyright owner for my use so all these things uh make our mind cloudy and we get frightened and most of the cases we leave that question so uh we cannot be very in copyright content okay but uh, in our indian copyright act until 57 just i'm telling you this article uh, section 52 is the what you call uh, in english it's called the fair use here we call us a fair dealings in the fair dealing different uses have been enumerated if you use all those if you embrace all those uh, uses you cannot uh, attract or you can put yourself in the right side of it so you know classifications of the ipr i will not focus on the classification just i will let you know ipr on the ipr earlier it was a industrial property and the artistic and literary property after these uh, trips interventions because almost all countries under the ag sub trips and the wto trips is actually is a uh embedded concept on the memorandum of understanding or a kind of agreement within the wto who are the member of the wto you have the options to opt out of the trips but most of the cases opting out would not uh, be much helpful because most of the country most of the state they want to uh, make business with other countries without uh, progressing our business without spreading our business in other countries and sitting isolated in a one country is not a very good judicious and sensible decision at least for 21st century so this is why including india had to embrace what we need to do because most of the cases as i told you uh 
but these policies, these agreements, who are actually or actually prepared for this uh, on the viewpoint of the developed nations. They have never subscribed to the philosophy of the developing nations like India, Brazil, and South Africa. Yes, we have been escalated uh, beyond least developed countries, but most of the people in India still, still uh, present in villages. India is agriculture based nations, and we need to improve our all sectors. So in that case, sui generis system, we have to imply. Because new materials, what these multinational companies were looking for, they were looking for kind of, you know, um, expansions of these general intellectual property rights. So new materials, say for everywhere there is a smart device. And the soul of any sort of smart device comes from a cheap or an indicated circuit, technically we call indicated circuit. So you have to provide indicated circuit protections and semiconductor and IC protections and the database protection. However, India doesn't provide any kind of database protections, uh, dedicated rules and acts, but India has already enacted semiconductor and IC protections law. And the third most important, however, India is a developed nation. But still, we are not able to provide our farmers, our poor old farmers, their farmers' rights over the seeds. Rather, we had to do, as I told you, that uh, we had to comply with all these countries, developed countries' terms and conditions, because we are the signatory, original signatory of the WP in the treaties. We had to enact the Plant Protection PPRB Act, that means the Plant Protection Variety Act. So, there is a, instead of having farmers rights, now we provide the plan details. So, concerns of the academy is almost centers around all these perspectives. Access to information, availability, quality, privacy, clarity, and legal basis. Why is it so important? Because right now, with the help of these technological means, what we can do? Ease of reproduction. Immediately, you can have a, make a multiple copies of your master files. And most of the cases uh, in our digital preservation class, I discuss the concept of the originality has completely faded, completely burned. So we need to redefine the concept of originality with the inceptions of this intellectual property right, as well as these ownership issues, as well as this intel, uh, this uh, ICT issue. So it's a very difficult and a very cloudy area. Ease of reproductions, ease of distribution with the fast broadband and the strong network, you can send it anywhere in this world within a few seconds. And ease of compressions. We can there are compression technologies are there. by using we can send up big files, say for a 36 MB. Immediately we can drop it, uh, compress it, say for a 5 MB, and immediately we can send it. And without losing its quality. Earlier there was a, uh, a lossy file, and the not lossy files are there. Right now, without losing any kind of things, uh, because technology has been upgraded beyond our imaginations. So everyone uh, in India, most of the cases, loves to free write. I can give you a practical example. In every Sharodhya Shankar that is published during our Puja times. Once it is published, immediately you want it, you want to have it in your WhatsApp or any kind of messenger or, or any personal digital files. Why do you? Why do you want it? Because uh, you want to read it. Or if you want to have it for your status, whatever the reasons it is. But uh, important is that if that Sharodhya Shankha, if that issue consists of, of you or your colleagues, some article, some poem, some story, would you like to have it or would you like to have it so that next time your publisher never invites to write over it? Because it's a symbiotic relationship. We say uh, it's an economic development and economic uh, um, development and the economic interest. Because of this economic interest, all authors, publishers, book distributors are connected. Most often, we forget it. Immediately, we like to have it in WhatsApp. And love to up free rights as a very unethical because uh, if you want to respect others' copyrighted content, 
that means we must need to believe in the real copyright feelings that is a copyrighted content of somebody else, somebody's the owner. It's the output of somebody's burning of midnight swell. The way you burn your, your midnight swell to prepare an article or a novel or a story. So we should not have it until you access it in the proper terms and conditions. Whatever the terms and condition it is. And what should be the terms and condition? That can be debated. But there should be a terms of conditions as per the term, uh, copyright issues. So, you know, in case of this uh, the digital documents or the digital objects and uh, providing this royalty is very difficult, even in the DRM applications of the DRM. Because of the identifying the ownership is a very difficult. Earlier there was a ISBN, ISSN, right now is a D1. Yeah. Yes, we have actually granularized the ownership issues, but still sometimes it's not a problem. Establishing the copyright, who is the actual copyright, because copyright is transferable and copyright is assignable. Enforcing the copyrights and after identifications and establishing copyright, enforce how to enforce, how to collect this uh, royalty is a very difficult and a challenge. So, too complex. So, I will show you some pictures who are the real things. This is a Person from Latin America who was a librarian. Uh, he has been, she has been recognized. She has been charged with uh, as a delinquent because she shared some photocopy from her library. And this person's publisher threatens to remove millions of papers from research gate. Possibly many of you are aware of all this. And then coalitions of the responsible sharing. They are talking about a uh, responsible sharing. So that they want to enforce to, so that they can enforce this copyright. Because in the research gate, most of the cases, research gate, we share our research papers, articles, pictures, our presentations in the research gate. Because most of the research articles that we are not in position that we cannot provide because of this copyright issue in the normal uh, mail or normal uh, platform, web platform or any kind of you know, blog. So we share over here. As a, uh, is a zone for a social academy, academy, the social media for academicians. But unfortunately, these big companies, big short, big publishing houses who are not there, uh, Elsevier, Breed, IEEE, Portland, Utah Lua, everyone came together and they actually dragged this authority of this research gate to the core. It's a German core, European core. And then finally, Many of the art research articles that were very much important, that were facilitating our research, helping us, especially for the researchers who, uh, like us, who live in a developed nations, are uh, absolutely affected by this move. And this, uh, they are uh, doing some things, coalitions, and they are tracking it to our different courts. I hope many of you have seen this YouTube. Uh, notifications that this video is no longer available into copyright field. So what is a copyright? I hope all you know, but still, uh, I would like to uh, clear the whole concept. The copyright is a kind of intellectual property. It's a given to the creators. It's a neutral term. Neutral term is a creator. Neither literary nor artistic. Concept. It's a creator. It's a given to the creators. For a limited period of time, here it is a 60, earlier it was 50. Just to respect Guru Dev Ramindu Nath Tiger, this uh, 10 years was escalated by the government of India. Right now, it's a 60 years. European nations, they would have in 70 years. And after that, limited period of time, we go to the public domain. So anybody can access it and without any fear of copyright litigations, copyright violations or anything. So what is that? So copyright is a kind of intellectual property right that is given to the creator and limited period. For a limited period, it's a 60 years right now. And after that period, it will be okay. What is the criteria? First criteria is it has to be fixed. Be it an analog media or a digital media. You have to write, as I told you, there is a no copyright. No patent is given on the right. 
it has to exist in the tangible because intellectual property itself are uh, intangible intangible property but to get a protection or to become intellectual property rights as a legal rights that is conferred over your intellectual property it has to be tangible mind it intellectual property itself before its manifestation is an intangible when you express it in any form and form analog or digital it becomes tangible so it has to be tangible this one is a fixed originality factor whatever you are writing it has to be original and there is a very interesting aspects of the distinction between the patent and the copyright to get a patent you have to apply to the patent office indian patent office there are different forms of here and you have to apply for online you can also apply also in person you can apply for anyway but copyright to get a copyright you need not to apply anywhere yes this is true copyright needs to be registered if you apprehend that some day your copyrighted content might be might be uh, stolen might be misused might be misused might be abused in that case you can go for it's a copyright registration it is not mandatory copyright whenever you write something is your copyrighted content provided within a bracket provided you have given the due acknowledgement to the copyrighted content that you have used to prepare your article or write most of the cases when we speak we speak the first person the first portion of this uh, idea that means whenever you write something you will get a copyright yes you will copy it's your copyrighted content even your facebook even your whatsapp wherever you write something be it in a digital media or analog media it's a copyright content provided provided you have given the due acknowledgments to the persons or the authors based on which your work has been developed or derived it's a very important aspect okay so that point of view original but uh, in case of the patent when we apply for the patent patent examiner uh, check your patent very strict so originality factor originality factor especially in the patent is a very strict but in case of this originality factor when the copyright is not so strict examinations like this patent i will explain a little bit about the uh, juristical philosophy behind it minimal creativity then uh, examiner if you apply if you apply for the copyright registration so copyright examiner they will identify is there any minimal creativity yes few ideas are there but assembling all this idea did the person develop something new unique only then you will get a copyright so there are different doctrines as i am promising to tell you this is a philosophical basis because most of indian rules regulations and acts are influenced governed and inspired by uk act british act because uh, india was under the british for more than 200 years so still most of the acts origin point is uh, british act. but uh, another uh, aspect is also there because india is trying to shed out your uh, british orientations to american orientations and it is uh, it is uh, very much needed because the whole world is moving towards that because there are much flexible systems and this is why a uh, modicum of creativity doctrine it is followed by the united states patent and trademark office copyright us copyright regarding this copyright us federal court is very much strict first one is the suite of the broad doctrine that means you have it is the output it is the outcome of your great trial it is the basic philosophy of the uk in the modicum of creativity is a very strict copyright is a very strict in the us so government of india trying to make a synthesis out of it so doctrine of merger in india that notion of flavor of minimum requirement of creativity so everything is depending on the interpretations of the copyright examiner so but we interpret in that way it is the synthesis of the uk act as well as us act 
there are many aspects we will focus on this applied aspects only functional aspect philosophical legal aspects are also there ah you know it all it literary dramatic 60 years anonymous works 60 years divisions works of public undertaking 60 years Works of organization 60 years, sound recording 60 years, cinema to profit 60 years. As I told you, with the same idea, can be extremely in different form. Say for an Indian national movement. Indian national movement, if you pick up that time period, say for a 1905 to 1947, more or less focal period. However, it started with 1885 to the birth of Congress. But if you focus on this special zone when Gandhi came, was 1915. So uh, 1905 to 1947, the subject is same. Suppose uh, there are three authors, X author, Y author, and J author. They have written in the same book. Somebody questions me, uh, sir, will all these uh, authors will get the same uh, copyright? Then I answered him, no, this is not the same copyright, but all are entitled to get a, get a copy because maybe their subject is saying, but their expression supposed to be different. When the expression are different from the same idea, they are entitled to get a copy. Nature of a copyright, copyright is a negative. Why am I calling this a negative right? Because if I say that uh, this is my copyright content, and there, there is something that you are trying to tell between the lines that is don't use my copyrighted content without permission, legal permission. From that point of view, it's a negative right. Otherwise, the copyright is a positive right. The way society thinks, if you write something, you develop some knowledge based on a new knowledge, will be done. It's an intangible property. It's a time bound. It's a territory. If you get a copyright in India, it's a valid only in the Indian jurisdiction. And copyright is not a single right. It's a bundle of right. And no copyright is given on trust me. Different kinds of rights are there. That is the conglomerations of the different rights. Rights of reproductions, rights of derivative works, the rights for adaptations, translation, distribution, public performance, public display, all taken together is copyright. Copyright, most of the cases, uh, we understand is uh, economic. No, copyright is also more. And uh, there are hardly any study. I have started one PhD, uh, one one student, she has started a PhD, I'm um, supervising a PhD in moral arts. It's a very interesting and obviously on table. It's a moral right on the table's work. Anyway, so moral right is a kind of thing, the concept, just always think, always think there is a philosophy behind any kind of manifestative form of some form. What is a moral right? What is the philosophy behind? Philosophy is every creator and her or his creation is umbilically connected the way a mother is connected with her child. With her child, that's umbilically connected. So, even if you sell out your artistic work or uh, transfer your copyright, the owner of the copyright, the present owner, after buying the copyright or transferring the copyright, he or she is not in position to abuse it. He is not in position to make any caricature out of it so that the original author is defamed, original author is feel humiliated, annotated, or anything like that. So moral right never ceases to happen. The law says moral right never ceases to happen. Your economic right ceases to happen, but moral right never ceases to happen with the creator. If you have sold it somebody, doesn't matter, but you still do not have any right to deface or to make any caricature of the artistic works. It's umbilically connected with the creator. It's, a, it's not transferable, not assigned. And subsidiary rights is a very interesting right. Sometimes uh, whenever our article published, book chapter book published, immediately a transfer form comes from the publisher site. Immediately we are super excited when sign over there. And someday, suppose you have written a Bengali book, and one fine morning, some uh, of your friends or one of your friends might be calling from Canada, and that uh, I have purchased your book that is written in English, in uh, that is available in England. 
and out of your circle, you ask your, you ring your, uh, call your publisher, sir, I have not written a book in English. I have written a book in Bengali. So you have not informed me. You have not uh, intimidated me. You have not given any price uh, royalty for that. Immediately, the publisher will send you this transfer form because most of the cases, there is a small words. I am transferring my copyright and the subsidiary rights. As I told you, copyright is not a single right. Copyright is a bundle of rights. Distribution right, translations right, performing right, so display right, all rights. So when you are signed, because most of the uh, publishers, they are very much intelligent while dropping this copyright transfer, they add this copyright and subsidiary right, which actually embeds, which actually engulfs all those rights to be the Once you sign it, so you lose everything. Okay. So permission is licensing. Uh, one is uh, another interesting uh, aspect is there, exclusive right. Suppose you have given exclusive right to X publisher, but if you're not happy after four years, uh, if you have given exclusive right, that means you do not have right to ask for or uh, do not have right to go any other site. It's not possible. But if it is a you know, non-exclusive license. Non-exclusive license, you can talk to other other publishers. Who is the author? You know who is the author, producers. I will focus on the latest issues. This is the AI-generated content in the copyright. You know, India is the first country who has given the uh, one AI-based AI-based uh, author or AI or AI as an author as a co-author. So there are. Uh, as far as what law is saying that, just go through it. Upon reading section 16 and 67 of Copyright Act, along with the requirement from XIB to disclose the applicant's name, nationality, address to register a copyright, it can be inferred that the, there is an implied human authorship conditions for registrations. But what happens to that? Well, the question of whether human can be assigned to a GPT output is out of the tax code. It is clear that a human being cannot be the author of the content generated by ChatGPT. But what happens? Practically happens. This is a rather robust artificial intelligent graphics and art visualizer. One person from Kitsan in 2020. Uh, he developed, he designed an uh, image, you can call it an image of graphics based on some studios. And where is a, uh, he used this uh, artificial intelligence based tool, AI tools. This Raghav, he has actually named that apps as a robust artificially intelligent graphics and visualizer. Shortly, Raghav, and the name of the image or the graphics is the Surya's. He applied as a co author for the copyright. But uh, with not only it was uh, limited within the copyright office, it was also dragged to the uh, Indian Parliament and the Parliamentary Affairs Committee. Finally, we gave in a positive note and the copyright office of government of India has given the copyright, uh, copyright to this AI tools. And as a co-author, it's very interesting. India is the first country for that. I do not know what is the fate and what is the pros and cons that are yet to be studied. Anyway, India is the first one. But that is another interesting uh, aspect is also there. As I'm starting for a quite a while. So in the month of November 2022, ChatGPT came into the fore. So we all were super excited. And some of our enthusiastic uh, author, they have submitted one paper to Nature and it was published in 26 January 2023, 620 numbers, volume 613. So uh, he has given author status as a ChatGPT. But nature has given its response. In its response, nature editorial team said that for any standard article, there is a short peering, blind peering. But after peer review, if it is found that there are some clarifications we require from author's point of view, do you think your chat GPT will be able to provide that kind of answer or the suggestions or the clarification from its own answer is no. So from now onwards, from our editorial team, as the total creative ecosystem is going to change, is going to collapse if we uh, if we take this 
machine related creativity in the highly highly sanctified world of creativity and academia it's a very dangerous path we have already open for it so they have denied authorship to chat gpt and for that uh, many of the research article and the editorial team including in two of the journals and also the international editorial committee telephones so we have also after this uh, nature verdict nature rulings we have also included this kind of any person who are using chat gpt or chat gpt as an author will be rejected state cut test registration should be done so registrations you know it i will focus only few times are there so you know uh, normally the practically uh, you get if you apply for the copyright registrations in the copyright office ipindia.nic it takes 8 to 9 months official and 6 years you know how to count 6 years suppose the book is written by three authors date of the first author suppose the death was uh, occurred in a say for a november november 20 2023 20, but the 60 words will be start counting from the first january to the next 60 years this way it happens so performance rights is a 25 years there is a no international copyright available it's only territorial copyright but what is India is a member of the bond conventions. So if it is copyrighted to any member of the bond convention member countries, it will be respected in your country. That means it is respected in India and the vice versa. So it is a very important, most often we forget that uh, any, uh, suppose you are working in a college, university or anywhere, the basic infrastructure you are getting from these institutional facilities, when you are uh, at applying for this patent, copyright, design, trademark, whatever the IPR you are applying for, you are saying that you are the ownership, but work for hire as per provisions in and copyright act until 50 cent. Work for hire is primarily, uh, primary owner will be your institution. Peer is also very important aspect, as I told you. Uh, if you want to put yourself in the right side of the law, you should use this peer use. There is a uh, stage is there, one test is there. One test is called penal testing. Primary uh, nature's user. Penal is a nature, amount, and marketing by which you can understand, yes, I am in the right side of the law. This is a very popular course. I need not to explain. This is a Delhi University case. On the, this section 52 came as a rescuer and the surveyor of this case. Copyright is a qualitative copying and a quantitative copying. Suppose uh, UGC has given the 10% in the anti uh, zero tolerance and anti plagiarism act 10% uh, is uh, quite weak because uh, it's a quite debatable 10% means what suppose a book consists of uh, 300 pages if you copy 10% that means a 10% of 300 pages 30 pages maybe in the foreword of the introduction the author has said my chapter 3 chapter 3 is the core chapter by which all the chapter radiates okay uh, but that chapter consists of a say for 25 pages not the 30 pages if you copy that if somebody drags into the code it will be unfair news and it is a punishable and most interesting thing is i have forgot to mention some all other ip rights say for a pattern design trademark or any other switch and systems everything is charged in the uh, civil code only copyright is uh, charged with the ipc Indian penal code right now it's a new name has been given nationally the person As I told you, this uh, great man, Lawrence Lessig, he has proposed these different kind of licensing out there. Six types of licensing out there. You choose as per your choice, as per your uh, preference, the types and the amount of rights that you want to share with the society. DRM, as I already said, one interesting thing is uh, copyright infringement. Copyright infringement happens when there is a striking similarity. Striking similarity means most of the cases court understands uh, they do not try to make any similarity between the two texts if they want to juxtapose between They try to identify the errors portions. Error. What are the errors? If uh, some text is having some punctuational error or constructional error or any kind of error, is that same error is happening over there? You see this picture, you will find that there is a striking similarity with these pictures. You will find it. So what, what are the remedies available? Civil and civil. Civil remedies, injunction, damages, accounts, and costs. 
what are the damages uh, we have done to a particular author text? Criminal cognizable offense, imprisonment three years by number two lakh. And uh, digital rights, the first set of are very interesting. Because lack of a time, I will not be able to uh, discuss all those things. Very interesting. Normal analog books with the first set of doctrine. But the digital document, there is a no digital first set of doctrine. Because digital documents accessing means the basic concept of our purchase in the library has completely revolutionized and metamorphosed. The earlier concept is replaced by access because it's a license, no first sale doctrine. So things to be taken care of, verify copyright protection, conspicuous attribution, check fair dealing, different notices are there, and the complex responsibilities of the libraries. Very complex sometimes. I also wonder, uh, would you like to have a cultural cop? or do you like to be a cultural cop to our library things? So it's a very difficult.